Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. When learning a piece of written music, you've probably been told to slow it down to a more manageable tempo, learn it at that speed, and then speed it up to the real tempo. This is a great way to reinforce correct habits, because remember, practice makes permanent. For some reason, however, this often doesn't translate over into jazz improvisation. So many people divide songs up into specific styles, specific genres, and specific tempos, and they only practice them like that, and they never switch things around. I'm here to tell you that the best way to play more melodic and lyrical solos, and to play the melody more melodic and more lyrical, is to practice the song slowly. That's right, melody. A lot of jazz musicians treat songs as just a vehicle to improvise over and they completely gloss over the melody of the song. I think learning the melody to each song that you play is incredibly important and it is definitely something that shouldn't be overlooked. Also, I'm a big fan of learning the lyrics to a song if it has lyrics as well. Learning the melody of a song really well is not only important when you're trying to play melodic solos and improvise over the song, but it's important for the melody's sake as well. Once again, I think the best way to learn the melody of a song and to create more melodic improvisation over any song, no matter what the tempo is, is to play it incredibly slowly. That means taking those up-tempo tunes, those medium tempo tunes, and really pulling the tempo down so you can get inside each note of the melody and then each chord in the harmony through the song. Before I dive into the tune and give you a few examples of how I go about practicing playing melodically at a very slow tempo, I wanna give you a free resource. I have a masterclass called The Best Way to Create Melodic Solos. It's a 40 minute long masterclass complete with nine pages of PDFs that go along with it. And it is an incredibly great way to learn how to voice lead through chord changes. And I go over my really simple six step voice leading process. So many people have reached out to me telling me they've watched the masterclass and it's already improving their playing. I know that if you watch the masterclass, download those PDFs and implement that six step voice leading process, your solos will sound more melodic and just sound better overall right away. To get the masterclass completely free, all you gotta do is click the link at the top of the description down below. The tune I'm gonna use for this example is Joy Spring by Clifford Brown. That's usually played at a medium or up tempo, but like I said, we're gonna take it slow. How slow should we take it? Well, 60 BPM is a good starting point. So what I'm gonna do is create a backing track of Joy Spring at a 60 BPM ballad tempo. Now what I like to do is really get inside of that tempo, so I'm not just gonna play fast lines and bebop stuff and just slow it down, I'm actually gonna say what would sound best and what would make most musical sense at this tempo. This tempo now being 60 beats per minute. I'm gonna try to play the melody the most lyrical way I can at a ballad tempo, and I'm also gonna improvise over one chorus in this example at that ballad tempo. My goal is not to be able to play double time lines over the slow tempo, or to be able to, like I said, play those bebop lines and just slow them down. It's to be able to play the melody incredibly lyrically and musically, and also improvise through the chord changes, really hear the harmony, use great voice leading, just like I show you in my free masterclass, and make the best ballad solo I can over the chord changes to Joy Spring. Here we go with Joy Spring at 60 beats per minute.
It's pretty interesting at that tempo, isn't it? Have you ever tried to play fast songs at a slow tempo like this? Please let me know in the comments down below. The most important thing for me is to try to play to the current musical situation. In this case, it's a ballad tempo. It's slow, the chords are stretched out, so I'm not gonna try to shoehorn every lick that I know in there. The other great thing about playing slow as well is you get out of your normal licks. So I know on this song, there are certain two fives in the song that kind of feel really good at up tempo, but they might sound a little weird or funky, or they might not even work that well at this slow tempo. This is gonna force you to really think melodically through the chords. It's gonna really think about playing melody and playing lyrically through the chord changes. Now for the second example, I'm gonna take the exact same song, same chord changes, but I'm gonna put it at a medium swing. This is gonna be 120 beats per minute. The key when doing this exercise of taking a song slow then speeding it back up is that you're not gonna think differently when you get to the faster tempos in terms of melody, in terms of melodic playing, in terms of voice leading, all those things. Where you are gonna think differently is the non-note musical elements that fit the musical situation. For example, at a ballad tempo, I'm not playing swing eighths. In this case, it was a straight eighth note ballad. When it's 120 beat per minute swing song, I'm gonna be playing swing eighths. Also, it's incredibly important to have reference recordings in your ear when you're playing at different tempos and different styles. What I mean by that is when I go to play this song, Joy Spring, at 120 beats per minute, I'm not necessarily thinking of the Clifford Brown version of this song or some other fast versions of this song. I'm thinking about some other medium swing songs as reference points. Why is this helpful? Well, I'm gonna be thinking of, like I said, those non-note musical elements, including articulation, the actual feel and the subdivision of the swing, dynamics, the amount of notes I'm playing in the lines and how many notes I'm putting together in a phrase, so on and so forth. Having reference recordings is crucial at any tempo in any style, but especially when you take one song at different speeds and different styles, ballad and swing, you can then reference different recordings that you've heard and you're not always thinking of one recording to reference, even though it's the same song, but because it's different styles, you wanna really think of different reference recordings. So here we go, Joy Spring at 120 beats per minute. Okay, now it's sounding a little more like the Joy Spring that you know. 
When I'm playing a medium swing song, whether it's Joy Spring with a bunch of chord changes or some other song, like I said, I'm thinking of those non-note musical elements to get me through the song, but I'm really thinking of the current song I'm playing. So my melody, my melodic approach to voice leading is all based on Joy Spring. For the final example, I'm gonna take Joy Spring once again and play it at 200 beats per minute. Here's where if you did the work before, it's really gonna shine through. A lot of people when they play fast tempos, 200 beats per minute and up, all they're doing is thinking about what licks they can play. They're thinking about shoving as many notes as they can, play this line they heard, play this substitution, get through it, just use it as a vehicle for improvisation. Sure, that could be cool, but I'm really more concerned with playing melodically. So I'm still thinking, even though it's 200 beats per minute, I'm thinking of that 60 beat per minute example that I played earlier. Now, how is that gonna apply to 200? Well, the chord changes are still in the same order and the ratio of length of each chord to each chord is the same. So what I mean by that is if in 60 BPM, if there's a chord for one measure, there's still a chord for one measure at 200 BPM, just the overall time is more condensed. So yes, you have to have the technical facility on your instrument to play at a quick tempo, but mentally, as long as you take your time and go from slow to medium, then to fast tempos, you're gonna be able to pre-hear those chord changes, pre-hear the voice leading through the roadmap of the tune and be able to create a nice melody of your own, which is what improvisation is, and play a lyrical solo at this up-tempo. Also, when I play melodies at faster tempos, I try to basically play them like a ballad, just faster. Now, obviously I have to change some of those non-note musical elements, specifically articulation at a really fast tempo, but I'm still trying to play it melodically. My goal is if you take my melody at 200 BPM and slow it down, it's still gonna sound decent at that slower tempo because it makes sense in the overall term of melody. So here we go, Joy Spring at 200 beats per minute. All right, there we go. This video was just a quick overview of how I approach playing melodically and lyrically through a song. If you haven't tried this before, please give it a shot. I know you're gonna get a lot out of it. The great thing is this process can be done over any song that you like in any style. Let me know what topic you would like to see me teach next. I love to hear from all of you. I get lots of great suggestions and I'm really here for you and I wanna help you out as much as possible. Be sure to click the link at the top of the description down below to get your free masterclass and PDFs. Thanks so much again for watching and I will see you in the next video.